Hi, everybody. Welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Tommy, and today I'm joined by Angel. Hello. We are back after a long break, summer break, I guess, um, for yeah. Poor Charles, Tempted. Um, we are discussing week four, so I will roll the credits and we'll get right into it. I felt like I forgot everything that we watched with this. So when we first jumped in, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. like when we picked up with the characters. So I forgot that um, Allison walked in on Jamal and um, Gabby. Oh. No, Gabby, 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 Gabby. It's all about Valerie, yeah. Yeah. Um, is Valerie also at this like convent retreat thing? Is that I how she came know. back? I know she. I know she. The last time she was like stalking outside of it. Okay. I don't think she's actually there. I think she saw like Jamal, that Jamal was there and just was creeping. <laughs> okay. Valerie's been on before, right? Yeah, played by a different actress. Played by a different actress. Okay, I thought so. Um, so Allison and Jamal discuss, you know, Valerie and the fact that he's been with other women. And she's like, I know that, but like, I don't want to think about you and Valerie. And she says how like he's her one and her only one so far. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that he's always just going to be hers. And then I started thinking about the whole interracial aspect of it all mm -hmm. and like how that was like taboo in like the seventies and even probably the eighties. Yeah. And even part of the nineties. Like, was there any popular interracial couples throughout the nineties that you could think of on soaps? Jason and Keisha. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've never seen them. I want to. But then they, because of the accident, they kind of, you know, ended that. Did he like for, forget that he loved her or whatever. I don't even I don't even know how that ended. Okay. I know that like they I know that they just they kinda ended it after the accident. Did Y and R ever do an interracial relationship? They I know tried with Neil and Victoria, but Middle America didn't like that. Right. And I also feel like I've seen, at least in like the early two thousands, maybe mid, that they kind of have teased Neil and Ashley. Yeah, they did right before his death. But even before that. Like yeah, 2009, yeah, yeah, too, like yeah. yeah. And I wasn't mad at it. I actually was like interested. <laughs> and before and you know what, even going back to like 2017 ish, maybe 18, I was really into like Ravi and Ashley on The Young and the Restless. I like them together. You know, even though she was, it was like a May December because he was much yeah. younger, but it was also interracial and like he was cute and nerdy and I loved how yeah. much he like was obsessed with her in a healthy way, not in a stalker way. <laughs> <laughs> and before people say, Kane and Lily, yes, Kane and Lily oh. were considered interracial, but... <laughs> not about that. Well, <laughs> <I> mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daniel and Lily, they were good. They were good before yeah. Josh Rufer ruined it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Totally blocked out any relationship with yeah. Lily. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in the 90s, so I was thinking like, okay, so Jamal and Allison... Mm -hmm. This is 2001. They probably got together in 2000, right? Yeah. So they're not even a 90s interracial couple. No. And then, like, the first... I think the first interracial couple was on Days of Our Lives. It was... Um, Valerie and... Um, Valerie and David? David. David, yeah. Scott, David. <laughs> yeah, because like, cause then we get David. No, not David. Um, Eli, I'm sorry, Eli. We get Eli because then they named their son. No, don't they have a son, David? No, they don't. Oh, well, Ariette knows this, but um... <laughs> <laughs> God, is there is there son? No. Yeah, no, I'm talking about the babies. Carter oh, okay. and Jules. Okay, that's okay. Oh, that's, yes, yes, yeah, yes. I, was, um... I thought they named the baby when I, no, they did name the, the baby who had died, David, I think. Did they name him David Abraham? David Abraham, yeah. Okay, I think that's what it is. They like yeah, named that was it after the, the grandparents. The baby that passed away. And the other one's Jules for Julie. Julie. Carter, yeah. yeah. So Carter for um, Abe and then Jules for Julie. Oh, right, right, right. Carver. Okay, right. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, and that and that ends our interracial talk. <laughs> no, no, no. I have one more thing to ask. You. <laughs> oh, <perfect>. Awesome. <laughs> so 
nothing on One Life to Live because I feel like wasn't One Life to Live based in like racial issues? Like, wasn't there? Did, oh, yeah. Wasn't one of their original characters passing for white? Passing was for that white. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that was One Life to Live. Uh, was that was. Um, oh my gosh, Carla. So technically, she was in an interracial relationship in the sixties or maybe early seventies. Yes, I think I because I think was she with a white guy. And a black guy? I think that's what happened. And the audience was fooled too. Like they didn't know she was they were yeah, because like cause like if you see um Ellen Holly, if you mm-hmm. see of Ellen Holly, she's very light skinned. Okay. So you so it's like, oh, why is she dating a black guy? But then it turns out when she sees her mom Sadie, she's like, you know, she's actually you see that she's actually black. It's black yeah. <laughs> um, and then Nora, right? Because she has a, a black. Nora, girl. yeah. Nora was That's with it. Hank, yeah. And then. Um, Did that play out on screen? It didn't play out on screen. They were. I think oh. they were divorced by the time they wrote the characters in. Okay. And then mm. we have, and then if you want to go like Latino and black, that's. Um, oh my gosh, Carrie and Antonio. Hmm. So I remember Sherry Song from Sunset Beach was on there briefly. Yes. Not briefly, like she was on there for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like them. I was actually watching One Night mm-hmm. Live because it's open. I like I just got so bad, yeah. so I was obsessed with everything. <laughs> but now that it concludes our interracial talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> our interracial corner. <laughs> Don't um, keep interracials in the corner. <laughs> So when she was like, "Yeah, you're my one and only, and you'll you're mine or whatever," I was like, "Because mm, mm-hmm. I know that this is probably the arc that they break up eventually mm-hmm. at the end." I don't know how that happens, but because everybody's kind of acting weird because of Caleb's th- thrall, we'll call it uh-huh. his influence. <laughs> I'm sure that has something to do with it. Yep. Um, but I love that Allison took it upon herself to go see Valerie and be like, "Listen, bitch." <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's mine. We're not breaking up. I don't, I don't like your cute little gifts that you're sending him. <laughs> Took the CD right back. Yeah. But then Valerie kind of smirked at the camera. Okay, I was going to bring that up because it was yeah. a quick cut, though. Or maybe because I was watching it faster, so it was a quick cut. <laughs> yeah, she kind of smirked she at did the smirk. camera. Yeah, so she's up to no good. She is up to no good. Um, currently, with all the soaps that I'm watching... I feel like all of the um, evil people have V names. Virginia, Vanessa... No, oh Valerie. <laughs> no, because Vanessa's not evil. Wait, who's Vanessa? On Sunset Beach. Vanessa's not evil. It's Virginia's oh. evil. Well, then there's just a lot of B names. <laughs> <laughs> no, Vanessa's a good girl. Yeah. That's true. Virginia, well, Virginia hasn't gone to evil yet, but. Oh yeah. no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wa- I've been listening. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, that was kind of it for Allison and Jamal. Yeah, that was it. That, that was the only thing they had this week. Yeah. Um, I was cracking up with Eve and Ian because mm-hmm. she's they, she's like having these like mood swings and she's like, stop telling me what to do. She's like, I do what I want. I'm a doctor too. I know about bacteria. <laughs> like, like <laughs> taking care of the baby. <laughs> and I like when she started throwing things and she was yeah, she like, throwing things. she's, I don't know, I forgot the baby's name. D- uh, Danny. 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 She's like, Watch out, Danny. Your mom's crazy. <laughs> she's just like, looking right and he's just standing there, like going through a book, and he's like, "Are you done with your tantrum?" <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. I love. I'm gonna miss Julie Pinson. I love her. Yes, yeah, I, I wish she was on our screens currently somewhere. <laughs> she could have been Taylor, honestly. To, just to, to be honest, she could have honestly, been that would have been better. That would be better. Like no shade to um, Rebecca Buttig. she's a great actress. Just I she's just, too I'm, young. I'm sorry, she's too young. Young, it's an age thing. Yeah. Um, even Julie Pinson is slightly too young, but it would be better. I she, think. Yeah, but she plays older too. Yeah, that's true. Um, to me, she oh, does. I'm not sure about anybody else. Lucy and Kevin um, make love, and apparently, in his sleep, he must have said Eve's name. <laughs> And Lucy says, like, you know, after the best sex of my life, you say your ex-wife's name. And I'm like, yeah, that was the best sex. That one night out of 
Huh? All the decades you've been on soaps, <laughs> that was the name. <laughs> I I feel like the one. Oh my gosh, there was it was like recent. I think it was in Tainted Love. When they get back together, no, sorry, it was fate. It was fate. It was fate. It was fate. <laughs> fate was up there, like, right? When they were when they slept on the on on in the living room, right? Before Eve came back. Um, so Kevin gets a note. An o- ominous note warning him about Ian and that he's mm-hmm. gonna hurt Eve, like physically, maybe even kill her. Yep. So he starts like a little investigation. Um Livy is, you know, trying to shake off Caleb, but she keeps having these moments where we the, the screen gets shaky. And when the screen gets shaky, I can't tell if she is hearing like just hearing him or if she's like becoming hypnotized. Like I almost think, like feel like she's gonna yeah. pass out when the when the screen gets cheeky, because <laughs> I want to pass out when the screen gets cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also a very edgy, kind of short with Jack wants to be left alone. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a scene with like the ceiling fan where it starts spinning and Jack gets up just in time because it like if oh, it would have fell on him, it probably would have decapitated him. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, there's scenes with where we see Caleb, and he looks more, is the word corporeal? Like, you could touch him? Yeah. And then he looks, like, translucent. So I'm like, which one are you? <laughs> yeah, which one are you? <laughs> like, transparent or opaque? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're opaque. Now we're transparent. <laughs> oh, so I, rewinding, Livy and Jack are bickering, we'll say. They're not yeah. really fighting. They're bickering because he found her in the catacombs. Mm-hmm. Half naked. You know, where the bed is and there's no plumbing. <laughs> 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 um, which is, like, crazy because he said that he sealed off the catacombs. So how would little Livy be able to, like, move the rocks or boulders or whatever to get in know. there? <laughs> She's superhuman. <laughs> um, so they probably don't explain this, but I don't understand, how, like, how Caleb's there but not there. Maybe they do, but I just feel like they don't yeah. they won't go into detail like a primetime show might. Yeah. I wonder if it was the music if I had anything to do with the music box. Oh. I, I keep forgetting about the music box. Yeah, because that's the part where I was just like, damn it, Livy. <laughs> You're back. You brought him back. And now that you mentioned that when Livy gets all dizzy and if her screen mm-hmm. gets shaky, do we hear the music box theme? I think we do. I don't oh. look back on that. Um Chris is still obsessed with becoming a vampire. He's been testing blood and taking out the vampiric, <laughs> like wanting to feed aspects of it. I don't know how he would know that, but okay. Because <laughs> he's a doctor, he went through years of medical school just to yes, get no, because they, they test point. vampires in medical school. <laughs> 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 and he's like talking himself up like to do it. Mm-hmm. Wraps his arm, he's about to stab himself with the needle of blood, vampire blood, and Karen walks in. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what the hell are you doing? We also have to keep in mind that um, Karen's an ex-addict. Yeah. Because they have a struggle, because she tries to stop him from doing it. She thinks he's crazy, and she ends up getting stuck with the needle. Mm-hmm. And passes out. So I have, like, not questions, but, like, doubts about this. Like, okay, you were struggled, she got stuck with the needle. It doesn't mean you had to press the needle in so that she, like, her the whole thing is in her. Mm-hmm. Like she could have gotten jabbed and you just pulled it out and nothing. Mm-hmm. Maybe like a drop got in her, but nope. Because we have to make this dramatic, the whole thing went in her. <laughs> he pressed it. <laughs> so now that's why I bring up the attic thing, because I'm wondering how whatever is in the blood is gonna affect the attic aspect of her personality. Mm-hmm. And I just keep thinking that eventually she dies, and I don't know when she dies. <laughs> No, no, she dies under different circumstances. Oh, but, okay. Um, okay, so I don't have to worry. I'm not going to say. Anything. I'm not going to say. <laughs> it has nothing to do with. Um, Gabby is at the bar. Um, what was the bar called again? I forgot. Recovery room, not the recovery the, room, uh, not the um hospital. The not the hospital, bar. the bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she runs into Frank, and they talk about Joe and that he's moved on. And even though it's been a while since we've watched, it really hasn't been that long on the show because he left like mid tainted love, and we're still in the beginning attempted, which is he the went, next yeah. Part. He left like early June. Yeah, and this is 
This is the first October. week of October, and he's moved on. He has a new girlfriend. Did you love Gabby that much to give that short time to get over? <laughs> I wonder how much of that is true because, like, I know how Joe, the Joe Gabby thing ends. Um, yeah, I remember you said he comes back, so I'm waiting for that. Yeah. Is it in this arc he comes back, or is it later? Either miracles happen or secrets. Okay, maybe he comes back for Christmas then. Yeah. Is it the actor that we saw last? Yeah, it's the last actor. Yeah. Okay. Um. And Frank, uh, it was a nice little scene because he says to yeah. Gabby, like, even though you and Joe it didn't work out between you, you're still family, and I'm here yeah. for you. I was like, oh, that's nice. I like mm -hmm. that. I was like, I like friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> um. Ray Free appears. Oh, because Lucy's still having vibes. She feels like something's off in the town. She doesn't know it's weird. Yeah. And Rafe appears, and she's like, "Oh my god, I was just thinking about you." <laughs> and here you are appearing from Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Tell me about your vi your vibes." He's like, "I feel something's off." He's like, "But I'm not from here, so I don't know what the, the normal vibes are." <laughs> yeah, I like like says that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if this is normal for poor like, Charles. I don't know if this is normal for poor Charles, or if this is just something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I remembered. Maybe it it's still too soon, but I just remember her vampire slayering more than she has since we've been watching. <laughs> yeah. But maybe like once we get to you know Caleb actually being back. Um. Did we get anything out of the interaction between Rafe and Lucy? Like, was there anything notable that we should like remember? He has a vision of Lucy being a slayer and being killed. Oh, yeah, she got, like, her neck snapped. I was like, oh. Yeah, she got her neck snapped. Is that, like, a premonition that of something he has to stop? I think that's what it is. I don't even, I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay. Um, I did note his sweater. It was very of the year, like, 2001. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> also, um, I felt like it was a little off, but maybe it was, like, the tail end of it. Allison had chopsticks in her hair. I felt like that was, like, a 90, late 90s <laughs> thing, but it could have been 2000. <laughs> Um, that sounds like something that Belle would also have in her hair. On days, yeah, on she days, has. Yeah. I remember before she cut her hair, and it was a little bit longer. She, I remember having chopsticks in her hair at one point. <laughs> this is the style. I think she even discussed it. <laughs> like there was a whole scene devoted to the chopsticks. Because <laughs> I think Sean was making fun of her. <laughs> she was like, "You don't know what cool is." <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention I don't like Bell and Sean? <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it. You mentioned it in the previous podcast. Yes, not in this one, but like you know. I mean, they're fine. I accept them. I don't want them. I oh, like like I said, I want them on the show. Oh, I was going to say something last night at the uh, in the stream. Um, I guess I don't. Know, I guess we can just extract this part. But I did see what you meant by Ben and Sierra being the next Bell and Hope in the. Patreon oh. exclusive. As far as like the peril and everything. Yeah, I saw the parallels. Yeah. For me, I think I was over Ben and Sierra after the um their wedding and the church explosion. Yeah. That was kind of like where I was done. I like them. I like them. Because then I don't point. know. They just got out of hand. <laughs> they could have written them off at that point. I wouldn't have been mad. Yeah. Although I did like I did like parts of the, like his torture and the brainwashing thing with Ka um Cassie with Eve, <laughs> but it was like character assassination for that for Eve, so mm -hmm. that's why it was kind of like 50 50 for me. Um, if you didn't know Eve, I I could enjoy that, but it wasn't. I don't know. I just feel like there's no redemption for that character, but it's days and they redeem everybody. Yeah, so. <laughs> I would like Cassie to come back at some point. Or even uh, Charlotte. Yeah, or Charlotte. But I've, I don't know. I feel like Cassie made it her own. Yeah, she did. And I don't really know Charlotte. Like, people always want her to come back. And I'm just like, yeah, but I like Cassie. You know, Charlotte <laughs> wants to come back, from what I understand. <laughs> but back to poor Charles. Back to poor Charles, yeah. <laughs> um, so where are we? Oh, so Kevin gets in his car, and there's a woman sitting in the back seat. Mm -hmm. And I was so confused, because she had some kind of an accent. I don't know if it was Australian, British. I don't know. She has some kind of accent. And she's like, don't look at me. She had a face <laughs> like, on. 
Yeah, she has like a whole thing covering her face. And she says that she was having an affair with Ian overseas. I don't remember where. I want to say Africa. It may not have been Africa. It's always Africa. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she was married. And that he killed her husband and he tried to kill her. He left her on the road for dead, but she didn't die. And she doesn't want him to know that she's alive. Right? But basically, they're trying to say that, like, the stuff that happened in Fate didn't happen, like, happened on purpose. On Ian's side. Not it, not on um, Jeffrey Morgan from Guiding Light side. <laughs> Who's Jeffrey Morgan from Guiding Light? Oh, we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> was he that? Was he the villain? He was a villain on there. Yeah, he was. Remember the villain? Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, what was what's his name? But the, the, the mean villain that like one of the, the cure fate, yeah. that was dying. Oh, I didn't know he was on Guiding Light. Yeah, he yeah before poor Charles he was on Guiding Light. Oh, he's cute. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> when we get to my seventy-seven, you'll be seeing more of him. Does he play heart? No, he doesn't play heart. He plays. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, Jenna's husband. Okay. Yeah, but well, we haven't. Really we're far. We're yet. really far from there. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, was he supposed to be her husband? I think they were supposed to get married. Like the the, the, the woman in the back seat, the guy he, that was her husband. No, I don't think. No, 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 no. This is a whole. So he. So they're trying to say that they set up, that they set up, because it was a, it, it's a, that the thing that happened in Fate is a parallel of what happened with Amory. That's the girl. That's the woman. Oh, okay. Oh, because the. Oh, I got you. What you're saying? Yeah. So they're trying to. They're trying to say that. Fate, they're saying that Eve was with, um, Kevin. Mm-hmm. And she was married, obviously. And yeah, I get you. I'm on the parallel. Yeah, yeah. There's, a par yeah, there's a parallel. They're trying to say that. I thought you were saying the story was they they were referencing the storyline, them being kidnapped, like that the characters were connected. I was on a different page. No, they're not connected. Days. They're not connected. They're trying to rewrite Faith by saying that Ian meant to do this. Okay, gotcha. All right. Which we find out later that <laughs> that wasn't the case. Yeah. So this woman goes to the catacombs, reveals herself, and I'm still like, who is this? Because I'm thinking about another one that comes in secret. Yeah, me like, too. not her. I'm like, who is she? And then she transforms into Livy. It was all an illusion. illusion. <laughs> so that was cool. <laughs> but then but then Ian was had a photo of the woman. Yes, yeah, so she is and real. So the woman she's is a, real. Or she was real if she's alive. <laughs> I don't know. But it was it ripped? He ripped it apart, yeah. He ripped yeah, it in okay. half. And then Kevin finds it. When she when first he, appeared, I was like, is this Grania, Granada, whatever? Granada. <laughs> <laughs> um what else? Who am I missing? I think that, that was pretty much it. That was like yeah. the cliffhanger, right? Revealing that Livy was this woman. Well, then also that, well, there were multiple cliffhangers. There was, um, which I'm surprised they got back on track that quickly after nine, the 9 11 stuff. But I guess they had the. It was probably recorded already and they just. Yeah. Yeah. So they, it was uh, Kevin went into Ian and Eve's apartment and found a picture that Ian ripped apart. And right. he comes in and says, what the hell are you doing here? Mm -hmm. uh, the reveal that um, the woman, that uh, Libby was playing the woman. Mm -hmm. um, Rafe um, having a premonition that Lucy gets killed mm -hmm. as a vampire slayer. And I think there was another one. Might have been the Karen Chris stuff. When Karen runs off and after okay. getting stabbed, after getting uh, adrenaline put in her, yeah. And Gabby's pretty much like, I gotta go pray. I gotta pray. <laughs> oh, Gabby, Gabby, Gabby! Remember, she goes outside. The light explodes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it like exploded or whatever. The yeah, lamp. the lamp yeah. explodes. And I guess she was injured because I think I saw blood on her forehead. Yeah, so I saw like there's blood on her forehead. And I think her arms were wrapped too. Okay. 
So it must have been that bad. Okay. I think that was it. Yeah, that's Frank it. Frank was like a talk to. We had that Frank scene was, with yeah, Daddy. Frank was really a talk to. Um, yeah. You know, there was a brief scene with Frank and Karen, but that didn't really go anywhere. So. Oh. Like in the beginning, where in the beginning of that episode, where like, and then Chris comes on, and he's and he just says something, but I forgot what he says. <laughs> Chris is just power hungry, and that's why he wants to be a vampire. He just wants. Well, to Well, see, it's not enough power. that he. It's not enough that he. So I didn't realize. I didn't realize this, but he actually. But Karen was actually once chief of staff. Yeah, he mentioned that, and I was like, "Yeah," I was like, "I didn't know she was like." And then, she, but she had to step down because of the, the because of the drug addiction. Oh, was it chief of staff or was it um, um head, um not intern resident chief resident chief re chief residency yeah yeah. Oh, did you see in the preview Alan Quartermain's gonna yes, be? Yes, I saw Alan. I was like, yeah, oh, look at him still Alan. coming. <laughs> I didn't realize they were still doing crossovers. Right. <laughs> it's so it'll be interesting how he works into like the mm -hmm. supernatural aspect of this, if or if it's just like a quick appearance. Mm. Um, I know that um, Monica was in the pilot movie. Does she cross over more, or did she ever cross over more? I think she does pre arcs, but I don't remember her being in the in when the arcs happened. Okay, and Sunny never did, right? There was like no. Sunny did. Oh, he did pre arcs, yeah, and oh. with a different Karen. Um, All right. The was, well, the yeah, one that was, was from the beginning of the show. Yeah, the one was the beginning of the show until like ninety seven. No, no, no. I'm sorry, ninety eight. Okay, like that's good because like yeah. their characters are connected, even though it's two separate shows. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I'm kind of interested to watch the pre arcs more. <laughs> yeah, I think it should. <laughs> wonder if you should uh, run them parallel to these. Hmm. Maybe the pre arcs could be a Patreon exclusive. Yes. Let's make the Patreon exclusive. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so if you haven't noticed, if you're watching this, there we have a little ticker at the bottom. We now have a Patreon that is active, and we have exclusive content on there for subscribers. Um, we've been doing a few live watches. Um. So if you're interested in seeing us react and comment on episodes of soap operas, feel free to subscribe. And we are taking suggestions. So if there's an episode of a soap opera you'd like us to watch, let us know and we'll try and track it down and we'll watch it for you and react. <laughs> um, do you have anything else to add before we wrap this up? Nope. I think that the, well, actually, I think that the, that, that having the pre-arcs, well, we could even do the movie. We can start with the movie. Let's start. Yeah, we can make we can make we can make like a whole thing, a big thing about the movie, like a like a watch like a watch party. With a watch movie. party, yeah. Yeah. Karen might be down for that. She she yeah. said last night she loves her some poor Charles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, thank you for tuning in for another week's worth of Poor Charles Tempted. As always, you can find us on all the socials at Queers and Soaps. And until next time, have a great day. Bye. Bye.